Hi everyone, this is Adam from Recreation Services and this week I'm going to be talking about the difference between hypertrophy and hyperplasia. Generally when you're talking about muscle growth or muscle building, you're talking about hypertrophy, uh, but there's also this controversial term called hyperplasia, which as of 20, 25 years ago was considered a complete myth. So today I'm going to be talking about the differences between the two, if hyperplasia even exists, and if it does exist, how you would achieve hyperplasia. So before we get into it too much, we need to talk about the difference. So hypertrophy is the increase in size or cross-sectional area of a muscle fiber, which is done by either increasing the size of the contractile proteins or increasing the content the fluid or enzyme content of a, of a muscle cell. Hyperplasia is the growth of a new muscle fiber. So rather than growing your current muscle fiber, you're generating a brand new fiber that would then grow on its own. Both of these techniques grow the cross-sectional area of the muscle and from a aesthetic standpoint would look exactly the same. So looking at someone who got bigger, you wouldn't know whether it was hyperplasia or hypertrophy. The term hyperplasia is often associated with the growth of tumors, an uncontrolled growth of cells that leads to a tumor. However, hyperplasia in skeletal muscle is not associated with any growth of tumor. There's still limited evidence of hyperplasia in humans. However, there's been a lot of studies recently in birds, cats, mice, and fish where they've simulated animal specific resistance training that has led to hyperplasia. So for example, they use weighted wings in birds, in cats. They try and mimic similar kind of muscle activation that you would get in a resistance training program. And in mice, they reduce the amount of myostatin, which is associated with limiting muscle growth. So in humans, we don't have as much research to look at. In the past, there have been some studies where they've counted muscle fibers, but you're generally counting them by hand and leaves a lot of room for, for human error. However, they have found that bodybuilders do have significantly more muscle fibers than the average untrained person. So the question then becomes, are they just genetically gifted with more muscle fibers or did they create those muscle fibers? There was one study in humans that showed growth in the tibialis anterior where the non-dominant side had significantly greater cross-sectional area, but wasn't fully explained by fiber size. So similar muscle fiber size, but greater cross-sectional area, meaning that not all of the muscle growth was explained through hypertrophy. It's also still undetermined whether the ability to generate new muscle fibers is genetic or not. If hyperplasia does exist, what might cause hyperplasia? The theory behind hyperplasia comes from the nuclear domain theory, where a nucleus is only allowed to occupy a certain amount of space within a cell. So once it grows to a certain amount, it needs to split off, create another cell to then make more space. So in theory, this is what would happen in the muscle cell. The muscle cell would grow or the fiber would grow to a point where it can't grow anymore and it's taking up too much space. So it splits off into another muscle fiber that can then continue to grow. So there have been few longitudinal studies measuring hyperplasia and muscle fiber development with no real significant findings. Some reviews have said that the evidence is scarce and if hyperplasia does exist, it would account for maybe 5% of your muscle's growth. So while some studies do find that there is some additional growth that isn't explained by hypertrophy, it's not a major role and suggested to be about 5%. So now that we know what might be happening at a cellular level to cause hyperplasia, how would we create that in, in our training? Because hyperplasia seems to happen basically when you've gotten to maximum hypertrophy of a cell and a, and a muscle fiber, it would take a very long time. So you need to train for an extremely long time before you kind of reach the point where your, your muscle fibers and cells need to then separate and continue to grow new fibers. The evidence that was found in the studies using animals also found that hyperplasia came from situations where the muscles were under extreme mechanical load at long muscular length. So what this means would be adding things like weighted stretching or pause reps uh, at the end of your range of motion. So whether you're doing like a chest fly or deficit deadlifts, uh, something like that where you're having 
an extreme load holding for about five seconds uh, at that bottom of each rep. So you would do, you know, five sets of four to six reps with a long pause at your maximum muscle length. This isn't suitable for all joints, so not all muscle groups can be trained this way. However, the shoulders are a good one, so for the chest or back, the hamstring can be worked this way as long as you don't suffer from any low back issues. Uh, and the ankles are another good one. So for the calf or tibialis anterior, these are generally the muscle groups uh, that you would have the best chance at working safely without, uh, without hurting yourself. So like I mentioned, since it is suggested that it's a maximum of 5% of growth that comes from hyperplasia, you should only then dedicate 5% of your time. So using you know, accessory work in your, in your workouts to focus on pause wraps or weighted stretching, uh, but you definitely don't want to do an entire workout of, of deficits and weighted stretching and things like that. So it's more of a supplement, more of secondary exercises rather than you know the main focus of your workout. And while we still don't know if this is genetic and if it can happen for everyone, changing your training and using different methods is good for hypertrophy as well. So even if you can't create new muscle fibers, these training methods would still help grow the muscle fibers you have and you'd still get growth that way. But in the end, normal training over the short term is not enough. Essentially, you need to focus on high mechanical loads over great muscle length and you need to train for an extremely long time. So it's not something you're gonna get in a six to eight week block where you're trying to build muscle. You really need to be building and building uh, until you've kind of maximized the space in your muscle fibers and then maybe you'll get a little bit. So in the end, there's still not enough evidence to say hyperplasia definitely exists and that anybody can do it, uh, but there is some evidence to say that there is some growth out there that is not explained by hypertrophy. Not quite the, the myth that it used to be, but still not totally confirmed. However, adding these training methods to your training won't hurt and it'll still help with hypertrophy. So feel free to work these into your workouts and grow one way or another. Thanks.